third. And he's right probably around close to that 7,500 yard mark here in the first first half. Raiders uh, trying to get out on the receivers and get on the offensive line, uh, the defensive line, quickly as possible. This time he's going to fake it and drop back and pass, and has a man in the seam and overshoots him once again. So the Raiders catch a break right there as the pass was intended for Justin Joyner once again, and Augustin Ellie just couldn't could find him. Is over two so far, and that's. Uh, that was a touchdown right there if he can uh, put it on the money. Yeah, again, we're just having to uh, to send our safeties up to try to stop the run and uh, had him wide open again and, and missed it. So uh, got an opportunity here, second and 10, if we can stop him a couple times. Second down and 10. Four o'clock still lead. Ball at the 20-yard line. Motion right to left. Fake the handoff to Bird. Kept by Augusta Ellis. Stays on his feet. Going to be brought down all the way about the five-yard line. So that midline game with uh, Gus and Ellie running the ball and Bird is really uh, the key right there for Clarksdale Lee so far after a gain of about 15. The Colts will have it first and goal from about the six-yard line. Well, everybody went after Bird, and, and of course he kept the ball that time. So that's uh, 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 what those plays were designed to do. So, so first and 10. Motion left or right. And they're going to fake the motion and come back, try to catch the Raiders. Jumping right there off sides. Gus Inley gets another signal from the coach on the sideline. Motion left to right again. Going to be a handoff to Spencer up the middle. He breaks a tackle and dives his way into the end zone for another touchdown for the Colts. That puts a score at 19 to 7 with just seven minutes remaining here in the first half. And we will see if the Colts try to make it a two possession. Boy, it already is a 14 point game or kick an extra point. I think they're going to go for the extra point and they will do so. So Alec Bird with his third rushing touchdown here in the first half. Yeah, just another dive right up the middle and uh, just uh, not able to stop stop the uh, stop the run game up the middle has been the biggest thing for for Kirk. So Crump to the back, little tip the extra point, snap his back, hold his down, kick is up, and this one goes straight through the upright, so it is good. And after a five-yard touchdown run by Alec Bird, that puts the score to 20 to seven in favor of the Colts with seven minutes remaining in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds with a kickoff right after this. My insurance rates are probably gonna double. But Dad, you've got... Allstate, with accident forgiveness, they guarantee your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Smart kid. Indeed. Ask an Allstate agent about accident forgiveness. Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? In Grenada, call Patrick Timmis at 662-226-7280. Crumpton gets set to kick off. Uh, this time, like Chip pointed out earlier, the Raiders have moved up a little bit on their return team to maybe get a chance to actually get a return. Crumpton's going to set, and he's going to kick this one. This one's actually better than the one he kicked earlier, and they put Beckham over there. Beckham's going to take it at the 10. He's going to bring it out. He's at the 15, breaks a tackle at the 20, breaks another tackle, tries to cut back, gets outside, and he's brought down finally over there at the Clark Tilly sideline at about the 25-yard line. So that's where the Raiders will take over, trailing 20-7 to here in the first half. Ball at the 25-yard line. Good kick return by Beckham. He uh, made one guy miss and broke a couple of tackles. And uh, actually, I guess about a uh, almost a 20-yard, uh, well, about a 15-yard return. So uh, first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Need to need to put a drive together here to get back uh, you know, in this ball game. Raiders offense have stalled out the last couple of possessions after scoring on their first drive. Got to get something going here. Uh, regular spread formation. Ames in the backfield. It's going to be a regular pass, drop back, and uh, just not on the same target right there as try to run a, just a little quick in, in route right there, slant to Cole Crenshaw, and Cole maybe thought he was going to settle down in that zone, and Gunnar obviously thought he was going to keep running, and then just a little mis, miscommunication right there. Yeah, exactly. It was a wide open spot there, and uh, Cole kind of sat down because he had an open spot, and, and, and Gunnar thought he was going to keep running. Uh, li very little miscommunication between those two all year, but that was one right there. So second down and 10 for Kirk Academy. They come out of regular spread formation again. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Hames in the backfield. Gunner waits a snap for Moore. Takes a snap, gonna raise up and hit Cole with it. Cole's outside, tries to break a tackle. 
and will not do so. He's going to be brought down right there at about the line of scrimmage as Alec Bird and Maddox Allen in there on the tackle. So another third down and long to go for Kirk Academy. Well, that uh, just uh, takes too long to develop out that far out. Uh, you know, you got to really uh, got to get a little quicker to him so he can, can get it started up field a little faster there. But uh, third and 12, big, big play here. See what the Raiders try to do on this third and 12. A little bit different look. I'm going to go pistol formation. Got twins to the short side of the field. Holman Taylor, the lone receiver at the wide side. This time Gunner is going to send Paxton over to the left side and Beckham in the backfield uh, right behind, directly behind Gunner in the pistol. Going to give a handoff right there to Zach Beckham, and Zach Beckham's not going anywhere. Uh, so third and long is going to tackle made right there by Maddox Allen once again. So for the third straight offensive possession, Raiders couldn't get anything going, and they will have to punt again um, with 540 and counting remaining in the first half, trailing 20 to 7. Well, just not getting any any blocking at all up front, and uh, uh, you know it's just uh, I think Kirk's best chance is to is to throw down the field. We've had some open guys, and we're giving them enough time there. But uh, anyway, uh, so Warner Herring standing at about his own ten. It's a good kick this time, higher kick right. this time, and it's going to get a good roll, excellent roll. It's going to roll all the way to about the 36-yard line, so about the 40. Unfortunately, our up man tackled the guy to keep him from blocking the punt, so we're going to have a holding here. So more than likely going to be holding on Kirk Academy. Hate to see that. Uh, Warner had to kind of move over a little bit to catch the snap. And got, I had to kick it again. And got a great kickoff. He kicked it high, and it was about a 40, 45-yard punt with an excellent with the roll. But, of course, it'll back them up, and Clark's L.A. will want them to kick it again. So, Well, it's one of those things where if you don't do something drastic, they're going to probably block it. But uh, if you do, uh, it's going to cost you, too. So uh, I just had to be looking right at it. The up man there, had to, he just basically had to tackle him or he was going to be by him and uh, would have put uh, a lot of pressure on Warner. So uh, going to have to kick it again, punt it again. So this time the fresh is going to have to – Standing about five, four yards deep in his own end zone. Hopefully get a better better um, snap right here. Yeah, yeah. They've been an adventure tonight. Of course, a yeah. regular snapper's out. That's yeah. right, and tolls. The snap's pretty good. Warner gets a good kick, good spiral kick right there by Herring, and it's going to be not taking another great kick. He gets an excellent roll, and it's going to be brought down, um, right there marked down at about the 44-yard line. So how about that? Under pressure, back-to-back -back kick standing in his own end zone. The freshman, Warner Hang with a, man, that was a 55-yard punt right there. Excellent kick by Herring. Yeah, great punt. Got a nice spiral, and the bass went up to catch it, but he saw some Raiders coming at him, so he decided not to, and uh, it landed perfectly. That nice uh, spiral uh, does and bounced forward for a, a good good punt there by Warner. It's an excellent punt right at, and it's right at 50-plus yards, 55-plus yards with a roll. So Clark Lee will set up shot motion left to right. Hand off directly up the middle to Bird. This time it's sniffed out, and they're dragging him back. And for the about the first time here tonight, the Raiders' defense stops Alec Bird and drives him back. So no gain on the play. Excellent play right there. Yeah, he's probably getting a little tired. He's running the ball so much. And uh, like I say, we, we put a really – Put a hammer on him that time. Stopped him for a short one and a half yard gain. He's he's gonna go out of the game for a little while. Yeah, he's a he's a rather big boy. He runs the ball hard. A uh, rather big guy, senior. He's probably 215, 220 plus pounds. Half is bigger than a couple of his offensive linemen. So second down at 11 to go for Clark still lead this time. Checking in the game is David Carr at the fullback position. And they're going to start, snap and throw right here. And a nice play at his cornerback position as Josh Stanford comes up and delivers a big hit. Completion right there. But uh tell you what, if Josh don't make that play, that's going to be a big game. Yeah, he had a nice uh, nice play by Josh. Hit him just as soon as he hit the ball for about a four-yard gain. So a big third down and about four here for Kirk. Big third down right here by the Raiders. It's already trailing 20-7. to seven. Need the ball back. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. Ball at midfield, motion right to left. They're going to run the counter trap, and it's going to be taken up the middle 
and he's going to get the first down. Will Sumter Bass, he's going to be brought down right there by Robbie Jackson at about the 44-yard line. So when they just come at you, come at you, that's the second or third time they've done that. Fake the dive run the counter to the backside. Well, we, we had him in the backfield. He made a good, good cut right up the middle and uh, was able to dodge that tackler. So uh, going to be, uh, be first and ten. Going to be a tall sweep from right to left this time. He's going to get outside Ooh. and hit hard. Trying to cut back in as Jacob Moore delivers a blow. Might have actually hurt himself. He's still, he hasn't gotten up yet, but a great job by Jacob Moore. He's He seems a little bit shaken up as he he throws his body out there. He hit, Sometimes he he might get the end of the worst. I mean, gets the worst of it, and then he delivers, but... He gets up pretty quickly. Good to see him get off the field. But, I mean, he has delivered some shots tonight and throughout the season. He's a little wobbly there. He really put a lick on him that time. Uh, one of the best hits all year probably. He's yeah. high-fiving the coach, so I think he's going to be okay. That's going to be your uh, senior middle linebacker next year probably, ladies and gentlemen. He's yeah. probably the lead, if not the leader in tackles on the team this year. Yeah, I'm sure he is. And um, so second down and five for Clark Stilley. Ball at about the 39-yard line. Augusta Nelly brings his men to the line once again. Bird, checks, Bird's back in. Bird has checked back into the fullback position. And they're going to get uh, offsides right there on Kirk Academy, trying to get offsides. Flag on play, offsides against Kirk. That's going to be number six jumping offsides. That's Holland Bailey from his defensive end position. Defense, so, not going to be short. Going to be third, well, excuse me, gonna, second and one for the Colts. And the ball spotted now at the 35-yard line. Second down and one to go. Clark Tilly taking their time. Got two minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first half, and they're, they're taking their time. It finally brings his men up to the line. Going to be a handoff right there to Bird off left tackle. And another uh, good job making the tackle right there. That's uh, Jordan Hobbs in there on the tackle. Um, the only a gain of about three or four right there, I think. Um, so the last two times Bird has received the ball, he's going to check out of the game again real quick. They've uh, actually held him in check, I guess you could say, so far. Yeah, he, he's just not running as hard as he was earlier in the game. I don't know if he's just tired or what, but uh, he's sure not running quite as hard. So toss sweep, motion left to right. Sumter Bass cuts yeah, it back in, nice we, cut, and he's going to try to cut it back. And he does, and he's going to be brought down at about the 25-yard line by a host of Raiders, but uh, not after a gain of about uh, eight, I'd say about eight yards. Well, we forced him back inside, just went anybody there to, to, to make the tackle. But we, uh, I think it was Holland Bailey was out there, forced him back inside, but just, uh, like I say, there was no one there to tackle. Second down and four coming up for Clarkville. Minute and 45 seconds left here in the first half. So second down and four for the Colts already leading this contest by a score of 20 to 7. And driving with just over a minute to go in the first period. Not in no hurry. Motion left to right. Fumble the snap, but does pick it up and gets it. And he's oh, got a wide right open right. hole on the counter. And he's at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Clark's LA. That's Justin Joyner on the counter play. Uh, and that'll put the score at 26-7 to with a minute 25 to go in the first period. Thought we might have caught a break right there, Chip, with the quarterback fumbling the yeah, snap. How, but many, how many times have you seen a fumble like that and everybody just kind of stops? and uh, Really doesn't know how to react. That's exactly what happened there. And unfortunately, it was just... Uh, had a wide open there to the left side for, for a touchdown. So Justin Joyner scamps in from about 30 yards out on the counter, and it's 26-7 awaiting the PAT from Corey Crumpton. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and this kick is good as well. So that puts the score 27-7 in favor of the Colts with just over a minute and a minute 25 remaining in the first half. Raiders will get the kickoff back in 30 seconds here on Star 92. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. Ah! Hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Yeah, that's awkward. Mm. Very awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. In Grenada County, call 662-226-4931. Getting set for the kickoff, Crumpton uh, tees it up. Back deep to receive is Zach Beckham and Paxton Hames. And let's see what he does with this one. 
He gets a pretty good kick, about where he's kicked it all night. Beckham's going to catch it on the run. Never mind, he fumbles the ball and does a good job of just getting on top of it. And he's going to be right there at the 25-yard line where the Raiders will take on over. So you hate to see that. Uh, Zach actually caught the ball, moving, uh, was going to, excuse me, attempted to catch the ball in motion moving forward. You never know with his speed what he could do. Um, catch the ball while running. Yeah, he, he had a little lane there, and I think he was looking at that lane before he caught it, and uh, uh, and unfortunately he, he bobbled it, and fortunately, though, he did uh, land on it to cover it back up for first and 10 at the 25. So 27 to 7 is the score. Let's see if the Raiders try to cut this deficit in half. They look like they will. They're going to come out in the gun, regular spread. Hutch with a wait to snap. Take the snap. He's going to take a three-step drop. Fired across the middle, and the pass is just out of the arm's reach of Jordan Hobbs on the skinny post. Um, good, pretty good. Uh, little let him a little bit too far, but had to get it over that linebacker's head, and Jordan laid out for it. Just couldn't hang on. Yeah, it was a. Uh, again, he was open, and uh, Gunner uh, just pressing a little bit. I believe tonight, uh, just uh, not quite uh, the accuracy he's had all year long. He's really. Really throwing the bell when he's had time. He's throwing the ball real well all year, but uh, he missed a couple of throws tonight. Second and 10 in the gun. Regular spread again. Gunner steps up in the pocket, avoids pressure. Fumbles the ball, football. Tries to get on top of it and does. Uh, he's going to get back at the line of scrimmage before he fumbles the football. Got heavy pressure, did a good job of stepping up in the pocket. I, I think was looking to run and just ball uh, fell off his hip pad or something. Yeah, I didn't see if somebody hit it or, or he just uh, just lost control of it. But uh, Clarksdale Lee's going to call timeout. They won't get the ball back again. So uh, With just a minute and one second remaining in the first half, it's going to be third down and 10 to go. And like Chip pointed out, Clarksdale Lee did call timeout, so we will take one as well. 30-second uh, timeout. Back with more Raider football here on Star 92. The Chrysler Great American Driveway event is going on now at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in their brand new location at the corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. Sunset has an even bigger selection to choose from. Come see the new 2015 Chrysler 200. A new location with plenty of room for you to check out everything. Ram trucks, Jeep Wrangler, and Patriot, Dodge Durango, and Charger. Come by today or see our selection at driveacurk.com. The Chrysler Great American Driveway event at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Ram in their new location, corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. Back after the timeout, 27-7 is the score. Third down and 10. Raiders have the ball on their own 25-yard line. Hutz with the weight to snap. Going to drop back. He's going to fire loose to Crenshaw. Crenshaw goes up and could not make the reception. Probably heard footsteps from that uh, Matt Spencer coming in from his uh, free safety position. Uh, that would have been right. That would have been a first down. Uh, Gunner put it a little bit high, and you know every receiver gets a little timid when they have to go up and try to make a play for the football. Yeah, it's not the first time that's happened, but I, I do believe that uh, Cole heard footsteps there, and uh, he's been really, really good this year at wide receiver position. And uh, again, a little bit high from Gunner, but uh, anyway. Uh, Got 56 seconds left here, and uh, Warner's going to be back to punt again. So let's see if the freshman, freshman Warner Herring can get off another good punt, um, consecutive uh, punt this time, like he did his last time, back deep to receive. Of course, it's Sumter Bass standing at his own 44-yard line. Low snap, handled well by Herring. He gets another end-over-end -end kick. This one's going to be a good one. He's going to get a good roll, and it's going to be right there at about the 44-yard line where it stops. So another good punt by Warner Herring. And that's where Clark Lee will take over with 48 seconds remaining in the first half, already ahead, 27 to 7, and looking to go probably on the, I just want to call that timeout, looking to get another score here or something before the half. They do have two timeouts remaining. Uh, Kirk has not yet used a timeout in the first half, but with the way they run the ball, they're going to have to get up to the line of scrimmage fast unless they're going to try to maybe catch the Raiders off guard. And, Maybe hit a seam route. They've already missed two tonight. Motion left to right. They will drop back and pass after the fake, and they're going to go straight down the post and has a man, and the pass is just, I don't know where the receiver was really looking at the right time. He kind of looked over his shoulder to the right, Chip, and the ball was to his left. It was intended for number eight, Parker Delaney, but uh, fortunately for the Raiders, it uh, was falling incomplete, so second and ten. Yeah, uh, we, we put a little pressure on him, so he had to throw a little bit earlier than he wanted to, I believe, but... Uh, 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 again, we had pretty decent coverage that time, too, but uh, just uh, wasn't able to connect on it. Going to go motion right to left this time. Going to fake it again. Going to drop back to pass. And has a man in the flats. Pass is completed to Bass, and he's tackled right there by Holland Bailey at the 35-yard line. But I believe, like you said, on that right tackle over there, 
got beat. I didn't see who beat him off the ball, but he did hold whoever it was for the Raiders. So, fortunately, it will back him up 10 yards. Yeah, it was Hol Holland Bailey actually got held back there trying to blitz him off the left corner. And uh, uh, I, was ho I saw it, and I was hoping the referee saw it, and he did. So I was going to back him up uh, back inside the 35-yard line. Back inside the 30-yard line. So this is going to probably end their chances to try to – well, maybe not, but they're – Sure, certainly hurt the chances to score here before the half. Especially that was about a 25-yard pickup on that last play. Fortunately for the Raiders, it was a holding call, so it'll back them up second down and forever to go for Clark's LA. We'll see what they try to do. It's just 33 seconds remaining here. And they're just going to give a direct end off to Spencer. He has a little running room, and he's going to be brought down at about the, I'd say about the 37-yard line by Jacob Moore and company. And uh, looks like Clark's LA is going to use one of their more timeouts, and they will, so... We'll see what the Colts decide to do here. Got third and about 22, something like that, to go for the Colts with just 27 seconds remaining here in the first half. So we will take a timeout as well. 30-second timeout back with more Raider football right after this. Hi, this is Nathan Burnett, State Farm Insurance. I'd just like to say on behalf of everyone here at my office, good luck to the Raiders in this upcoming season. Back here out of the timeout, Raider, uh, excuse me, Colts use their second timeout of the half. Got third and forever, about 22 yards to go. Uh, I'd say right here for the Colts to see what they tried to do. Augustinelli brings him in the line. Going to go motion left to right. Fake the toss sweep. Going to roll out. It's going to be a bootleg and has a man across. He's at midfield. And he's going to be tackled right there just on the other side of midfield. So he's right at the first down marker. It's probably going to bring up a measurement. But I tell you what, that was um, – I didn't. I believe that was Josh – that was Jordan Hobbs on the tackle. Jordan Hobbs probably going to make the tackle. Bass might make a, another man miss. <laughs> he's yeah. probably gone. Going to be fourth down by the yard. So they do convert on the, they fake the tall sweep bootleg and uh, run the crossing route and it's going to bring them up about a half a yard short of the first down. Probably going to go for it and uh, another timeout on the field. Yep, but that's going to be all for the first half. So Yeah, that's the last timeout of the half, 18 seconds remaining. Even though if they do get a first down, they will stop the, stop clock, the clock to reset the chains. So they might get a chance if they get a first down to take a shot in the end zone. 27-7 to 7 is the score here. At Kirk Academy. Another nice crowd here at Raider Field supporting our seniors on senior night. And, uh, basketball season starts next Saturday with a tournament uh, this next week. So at least for the girls, probably the boys don't. But uh, basketball is here. So we'll uh, need to, I think, uh, have them meet the Raiders next week sometime. And uh, need, to, need to come out now and start supporting our basketball team. I think we'll have two very, very competitive boys and girls teams this year and uh, so uh, look forward to uh, to getting basketball started here. Me too Chip, it'll be fun got to do some last year, be doing it again this year here on Star 92, we'll cover Kirk Raider basketball, they're going to give it to Spencer, uh, excuse me, Bird up the middle and he's going to get the first down, still fights probably needs to get down if he wants to stop the clock and he finally is brought down at the 40 yard line it's going to move the chains they're going to get up on the ball real quick Just 12 seconds remaining and the chain gang is a little a little slow once again trying to get it. So that's not in the favor of Kirk Academy at all. If uh, with the clock they're trying to get set over there. And now the clock is going to run. Augustinelli comes in line. Motion left to right. He's going to fake it and drop back to pass. Going to take a shot. Has a man down the seam in the pass. Oh, almost picked off. Thrown behind the intended receiver right there. And Justin Joyner and Jordan Hobbs with great coverage. Had a chance to pick it off, but it did a good job of knocking it down. Yeah, Jordan had great coverage there. They should have hit him right in the hands. He should have should have caught that for his first interception of the year, but uh, broke it up. And so this will be the last play of the game of the half. Uh, two seconds left. Twenty-seven to seven. Let's see if the uh, the Colts what they if they try to go to the end zone. They're going to take a, just a three-step drop. Augustinelli fires it up, and uh, just out of the intended reach right there of Corey Crumpton. So the pass falls incomplete, and that'll be. The end of the first half here at Kirk Academy as they trail Clarksdale Lee by a score of 27-7. So we will take a three-minute timeout and come back with 
First half highlights and a little bit more about basketball coming up and senior night here at Kirk Academy. 27-7 is the score. Colts back in three minutes here on Star 92. Hey, I'm Lane Leverett with Leverett Auto Glass. If y'all need any windshield repair needs or automotive glass repair needs, just let us know here at Leverett Auto Glass. Been in business since 1988. And we'd like to thank all of our loyal customers for coming to us for many years. And anybody that needs any windshield repair replacement done, we'll be glad to help you out. Just give us a call at 662-227-1153. Go Raiders! We just love doing it. Are you cooking tonight? No way, Jose. That's No Way Jose, 1201 Sunset Drive in Grenada. Come out and join us for mouth-watering Tex-Mex food, and happy hour starts at 7. Fun for the whole family, or come out and relax and meet new friends. Or just say hello to Charlie. Hey, Kirk. Come, come join us after each full game. We'll be here, right, Charlie? Three locations, Grenada, Houston, or West Point, No Way Jose. Tex-Mex done right. Stewart Sports and More is your Grenada Sports Authority at 60 Sunset Loop. We specialize in collegiate apparel for the fan. And don't forget for that rebel or bulldog in your life, we have a huge selection that will make them stand out at the game. Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. From shoes to equipment, we have it at Stewart Sports and More. That's Stewart Sports and More. 60 Sunset Loop in Grenada. And if sports are not your thing, don't forget the Broken Pot Thrift Shop. My insurance rates are probably going to double. But, Dad, you've got... Allstate. With accident forgiveness, they guarantee your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Smart kid. Indeed. Ask an Allstate agent about accident forgiveness. Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? In Grenada, call Patrick Timmis at 662-226-7280. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. Ah! Hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Yeah, that's awkward. Mm. Very awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. In Grenada County, call 662-226-4931. Back here on Star 92, uh, bring them in alongside Chip Graham. Chip, uh, 27-7 is the score here at half. Senior night at Kirk Academy. Uh, got a quick opening scoring drive with a fake punt. Uh, Cole Crenshaw found Gunnar Husband. Gunnar Husband ended up finding Cole Crenshaw for 25 yards out. Took a score of 7-0 early. But since then, it's been just uh, Alec Bird and company and that midline running the game, running the option up the middle. So... What do the Raiders got to do? Obviously, we know what they got to do: stop the run, defense, uh, stop the run up the middle. But uh, nonetheless, still like the competitive, competitiveness and how they've played here tonight. Yeah, they they fought hard. Uh, you know, except for that last touchdown, uh, they've had to earn every yard they've gotten. Uh, so uh, they've been very competitive, and uh, you know, it's like I say. You know, just when you're facing 12 seniors versus four, I hate to keep repeating that all year, but it's a fact. Uh, just the experience and the strength that those seniors have compared to, you know, nothing sophomores and, and a lot of ninth graders. It's just uh, some Kirk's going to have to deal with. And like I say, they need to keep working, get uh, stay in the weight room, and, and continue to get better, and then and things will get, get you know, uh, be, be different for Kirk down the road. Absolutely right. It will be different. Uh, next season, I mean, next season, uh, it'll be a change of conference, too. So we will see how that uh, plays out for Kirk Academy, uh, you know, rather, like we mean you've talked about, uh, rather small, smaller than small double-A school, and uh, Clarksville leave team tonight, no, no, no offense to them, but they 
could easily be 3A along with the lights of Indianola Academy, North Delta teams like that. So it'll be interesting to see if the Raiders are uh, in the conference next year, but uh, regardless, still in 2A, even if they drop down to maybe single A, they're still going to have some um, talent coming up with the ninth, 10th graders. They've still got a couple of juniors like Jacob Moore and company coming back. Just like Coach McCoy pointed out, it'll be interesting to see. As I asked him in the pregame show about what is he thought next year. And uh, like you said, weight room, you, you keep wanting kids to come out, keep wanting to be good, wanting to be good. And I believe these kids, after the, what they've seen and been through the past four or five years, you know, they're tired of it. Everybody gets tired of it. And once you get to winning some football games, it comes, it becomes contagious. Exactly. Again, it, you know, it's, it just takes hard work. And, and uh, just got to put – Put a lot of effort into it, and then in the off season, when you know when you won't be deer hunting and stuff, you got to you got to get your weight weight training in first, and uh, before you do some of those fun things. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's uh, been a been a good year. Uh, I, I do think that we're a better team, even though we're getting beat here pretty handily tonight. We are a better team than we did when we started this year, and uh, of course. some improvement, and so. Yeah, but again, if we continue to do that over the summer next year, then uh, you know I, I think we'll be a lot more competitive even next year. I believe so as well. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it's going to be the last game tonight, last half of football for our four seniors in Gunnar Husband, Cole Crenshaw, Zach Beckham, and Paxton Hames, who have had a, a big impact. They've had a tough three years in high school. Uh, you know, very good junior high career. Tough three years in high school, and you know that's just the way the ball rolls sometimes for certain kids. And you hate to see it, but you want these guys that are coming up. That are that are coming up ninth and tenth graders Dalton Bailey, Andrew East, your guys like that to come up and uh, you know they're they've had you know they've had they've had they've been uh, whooped you know a couple times this year you know they're but uh to have, be beat like that you know beat and just not have a very successful three year high school career and them them four seniors have a lot of heart and a lot of talent it shows uh, out there on the field because they do an excellent job of keeping up, keeping everybody up, still playing hard. And those are the kind of people you would, I would want to have on my football team. Every, I take those over talent every, every single day. Yeah, they are giving it 100 percent every play looks like, and so that's, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And, and like I say, they'll have a chance to, to uh, go back to the weight room and, and get better, hopefully. And uh, we'll see what next year brings. So we'll see what next year brings. We're going to talk a little bit about basketball, and uh, of course we do sponsor basketball and baseball. Like Chip pointed out, basketball coming up. Uh, the girls usually start a little bit early. Got a little uh, tournament. They always start at about the end, Halloween, into the end of the month. Got a tournament. Both high school boys and high school girls coming off conference titles. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. Girls got a lot coming back. They were really young last year. Still got a lot coming back this year with Coach Hudspeth, uh Excuse me, and Coach and um, coming back. And anyways, we got the boys coming back. Lost, lost Perella. Lost a couple good guys, but got got Childs. Gunner plays a. Uh, Basketball, you know, Cole plays basketball. Those will be the two main guys right there to go to. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, come back because, you know, everybody's going to be after them, both girls and guys, after winning the district title last yeah, year. Yeah, our girls, I don't believe they lost a single, uh, you know, didn't lose a senior from last year. A uh, lot of talent coming back. Uh, should should be the odds on favorite to win the district. Uh, with Jordan Childs and Jaggers Denley and Cole and Gunner and uh, got a couple of transfers that have come in that are really are going to help as well. So, uh, you know, for both the girls and the boys. So really have an opportunity to have a really good girls and boys basketball team this year. So I want to encourage everybody listening to, to come out. It's going to be inside. Don't have to worry about the weather. And, uh, that's exactly right. And support the Raiders and Raiders at basketball teams this year. Yeah, that's what we hope. And it'll be uh, live on uh, – we'll be, it'll be Chip and I on Star 92 just like football. And we will do baseball as well. But nonetheless, it is 27-7 to 7 here at halftime in favor of Clarksdale Lee. And uh, we will come back with a second half in a little while. And we'll take another three-minute timeout. Back with halftime highlights right after this. Academy varsity cheerleading squad, and accompanying accompanying them tonight is Miss Sophie Briston. Sure. 
Awesome job, girls. Congratulations, y'all did great. As everyone has probably noticed by now, uh, toward the east end of the football field near the flagpole, we're celebrating and honoring the lives of loved ones who have battled cancer or who are battling cancer at this time. These lanterns have been donated by loved ones to symbolize hope for those who are fighting the fight. All the proceeds from tonight's donations will go towards breast cancer research. Thank you everyone who has contributed. Back here on Star 92, we've got a little different little festivities going on here at halftime. I believe, what is that, Chill? That is fire. Well, I think it's in paper. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a couple of things tonight that they did during halftime. One, yeah. they're celebrating uh, cancer survivors and cancer fighters with these. Uh, uh, they, they have a name, and I can't escape my mind right now. But uh, uh, kind of like a flying lantern. It's a flying lantern. That's exactly what it is. But also, in my entire career of my life, I've never seen what was done at halftime. Clark Stell Lee has a football player that was diagnosed with cancer, and Kirk Academy uh, and this booster club and sponsor in the school made a donation to Lee Academy uh, in, in, in honor of this young, young man and to their family, and uh, had a standing ovation from the Lee Academy crowd over there. Really, really nice gesture there for Kirk to make a, a, a donation to them and, and uh, to help them fight uh, fight cancer. So I know Coach Poss is, or Dr. Poss is, he's uh, here. At Coach uh, has had a, a stepson that went through uh, uh, St. Jude treatments with cancer, and, and uh, so I, I feel certain he probably was involved in getting that started. So just a really, really nice thing that Kirk has done, making a financial contribution to this young man's family it really is and uh, of course you know this october is a, a awareness month for cancer is what's going on and um it's a horrible disease and uh, of course we everybody does the best they can and try to fight against that terrible terrible disease and a great gesture like chip pointed out by kirk academy and that's what this school is all about you know it's fun to get out on the football field and athletics and of course academics and uh but it's all about sportsmanship and not just that and just uh being a being there and doing what you can and doing your part and uh, that's a really really good job by kirk academy here tonight for doing that and um anyways the first half highlights is pretty still still pretty much it's been clark still lead the whole game uh run, running the ball I'd like to maybe get, like to get some updates throughout the conference if we can maybe in a little while see what's going on with like indian olin company and um a few other teams in the AA division. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, fortunately, couldn't do the game last week. Um, you were over there. Uh, couldn't make it last week at Indianola Academy. No, they're a very good football team. And uh, so well, I was going to ask about uh, ask you. What did you? Were you? Were you think yes, that those guys with the eyes on favor to come out of the I, north I, in the AA? I, I believe they are. They uh, from teams that I've seen. They probably have the complete package. They have size and speed and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I well think they, they, they're, they're well coached. They have a lot of players. They have a lot of sense. They have 13 seniors. Uh, uh, the, the running back was almost impossible to stop. Uh, uh, Tim's uh, a, a, a good quarterback, uh, good passing game. You know, Lee's passing game tonight, you know, is not what some of these other schools have been. So, you know, Indianola probably is going to be the 
the, the best chance the North has, but the South uh, has some really, really strong always, teams. Uh, always, Centerville and uh, a couple of big unfe undefeated teams are playing each other tonight down South. So uh, yeah, it's still, be, uh, it's still be interesting. Be. It will be interesting, like you said. I mean, they're always good down there. And, of course, you got like lights of Simpson Academy, Centerville, Brookhaven, teams like that. And uh, so hopefully the North can come through this season as Indianola is probably going to have a – they got North Delta tonight, probably the odds-on favor in that game. They'll probably conf uh, finish the season at 9-1, and one, more than likely going to get a bye first round before they even have to play anybody. And then you got maybe in the other conference, uh, I would probably say – Leak would be in there. They're usually in there. I'm sure they're in the mix and a few other teams. But it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of this conference. Uh, number two, you got Indianola's probably going to be one. And then uh, that's going to probably be one on the Critch. It's going to be two. They're playing bio tonight. So we will see what happens. Uh, the because one on the Christian barely had to go. Uh, they came from behind and beat this Clarksdale elite team a few weeks back. So uh, we'll see what happens throughout the district here tonight. And we got just a little bit more time left before we get back with the second half kickoff. And the Raiders will be kicking off to the Colts. It's 27 to 7 is the score here at the half. And we will take a four-minute timeout and back with more Raider football right after this. Freeman Creative Media would like to thank you for watching this live broadcast of Kirk Academy Raiders football. And please support these fine sponsors. Are you cooking tonight? No way, Jose. That's No Way Jose in Grenada. Call them 227 3355. Patrick Timmis All State in Grenada wants to remind you don't fumble the bundle. Let us bundle an insurance package that's tailored to your needs. Call them at 226 7280. Stewart Sports and More, Collegiate Apparel for the Fan, State, Ole Miss, Alabama, Auburn, LSU. Give them a call, 226-4747. And if sports are not your thing, go to the Broken Pot Thrift Shop next door. Sunset Chrysler in Grenada has the truck or car you're looking for. Give Jason Neal a call at 226-5124. Farm Bureau Insurance in Grenada. Al Cummins at Farm Bureau would like to say, come out and see Melba, Mary Ann, Terry, or Robert, and give them a call at 226-4931. Carmela's Ristorante in Grenada would like to tell you about a pizza special they have on Saturday. Buy a specialty pizza and get a one-topping pizza the same size for half price. That's Carmela's, 294-1020. Levered Auto Glass in Grenada has free pickup and delivery. Don't forget to see Lane Levert and give him a call, 227-1153. Nathan Burnett State Farm for all your insurance needs. Give him a call, 226-4432. Thanks for watching the broadcast, and let's get back to Kirk Academy Raiders football. Chrysler Great American Driveway event is going on now at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in their brand new location at the corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. Sunset has an even bigger selection to choose from. Come see the new 2015 Chrysler 200. A new location with plenty of room for you to check out everything. Ram trucks, Jeep Wrangler, and Patriot Dodge Durango and Charger. Come by today or see our selection at driveakirk.com. The Chrysler Great American Driveway event at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in their new location corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. Hi, this is Nathan Burnett, State Farm Insurance. I'd just like to say on behalf of everyone here at my office, good luck to the Raiders in this upcoming season. Hey, I'm Lane Leverett with Leverett Auto Glass. If y'all need any windshield repair needs or automotive glass repair needs, just let us know here at Leverett Auto Glass. Been in business since 1988. And we'd like to thank all of our loyal customers for coming to us for many years. And anybody that needs any windshield repair or replacement done, we'll be glad to help you out. Just give us a call at 662-227-1153. Go Raiders! We love doing it. Are you cooking tonight? No way, Jose! 
That's No Way Jose, 1201 Sunset Drive in Grenada. Come out and join us for mouth-watering Tex-Mex food, and happy hour starts at 7. Fun for the whole family, or come out and relax and meet new friends. Or just say hello to Charlie. Hey, Kurt. Come, come join us after each food game. We'll be here, right, Charlie? Three locations, Grenada, Houston, or West Point. No Way Jose. Tex-Mex done right. Stewart Sports and More is your Grenada Sports Authority. At 60 Sunset Loop, we specialize in collegiate apparel for the fan. And don't forget, for that rebel or bulldog in your life, we have a huge selection that will make them stand out at the game. Alabama, Auburn, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. From shoes to equipment, we have it at Stewart Sports and More. That's Stewart Sports and More. 60 Sunset Loop in Grenada. And if sports are not your thing, don't forget the Broken Pot Thrift Shop. My insurance rates are probably going to double. But, Dad, you've got... Allstate. With accident forgiveness, they guarantee your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Smart kid. Indeed. <laughs> Ask an Allstate agent about accident forgiveness. Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? In Grenada, call Patrick Timmis at 662-226-7280. So we'll be, uh, we probably will be on star 92 as well. Still ranked number one, Chip. Um, so I never, never, ever thought that I would see that in my lifetime, much, much less a top five. Never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. Uh, number one, of course. Um, but, you know, it's going to be, a, uh, you know, everybody's – Kentucky's a better football team. Bob Stoops has got that program right on track. And um, uh, we're going to go over there and uh, – Fight for that number one position is going to be the first time we've defended it, so we'll see what happens. First time we play a football game ranked number one in the nation. So, so uh, it'll be interesting tomorrow at 2.30 on CBS, or you can listen to it here on Star 92 as Dan Mullen and Dak Prescott and company travel to Lexington to take on the Wildcats of Kentucky and, of course, around the nation as well. The, the Rebels of Ole Miss go to Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Tigers in a big, big matchup. That's probably the best going to be one of the – Biggest games for that's one of the biggest games for Ole Miss remaining on this season. They got uh, LSU, you know, lost a couple. Obviously, lost to Mississippi State earlier in the year. Got pounded by Auburn, but uh, come on of late, and it's uh, I don't care what LSU's record is or what if they think people think they're not any good. I don't care who you are when you go to Baton Rouge. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. This happened before, and it'll happen again. So you know, with the Mad Hatter down there and. Uh, I, I still believe that Ole Miss will take care of business. Uh, next week could be their really, really big test. Uh, Auburn, uh, I, I rewatched the game today, uh, uh, sitting home at work uh, today, a little bit here and there. And, and Auburn, uh, they have a strong team, and State uh, took advantage of some turnovers. And if Auburn you know, doesn't have those turnovers, it's a really tight game. So you know, we'll see uh, See uh, next week as uh, Ole Miss uh, plays uh, plays Auburn next week. So yeah. there's a lot of things to happen between now and uh, December the 7th. A lot, a lot of things to happen. I mean, it's fun, and uh, I enjoy being number one right now. But, I've, uh, of course, if you're a Mississippi State, probably or an Ole Miss fan, you know you always – you know, you don't ever think – you always think the worst. You never think what, <laughs> what's going to happen. You always think, oh, God, this is going to happen. But nonetheless, and, of course, another team that I knew as soon as they got beat by Ole Miss was going to come on of late, and that's Alabama. Yeah. And they showed out last week. Yeah, and uh, everybody good. in the SEC, including – Mississippi State and everybody throughout the nation, they better be ready for that football team because Nick Saban's going to get them boys back on track. And he started out last week with a, a pounding on Texas A&M, 59 to nothing. So, well, A&M's finding out that uh, finesse doesn't work in the SEC. You know, if you have a you know a Heisman Trophy quarterback, you make him get by, but uh, you you, you got to have some 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 power, and uh, I, I believe that. Uh, I uh, know that uh, someone will probably change some of his recruiting tactics for to a little bit different because, like I say, it's uh, you got to have some of somewhat of a defense. You, you got to have some beef and uh, yeah. strength up there instead of finesse, like he's been trying to do. Yeah, it's kind of what he is. He's kind of along the lines of, a, I guess you could say, a Oregon type of uh, offensive style, right. Chip Kelly type right. of style of offense. But uh, both teams back here, uh, back on the field, as the Kirk will kick off, and Wilson Brandon will be doing the kicking for the Raiders. 
And uh, the Colts are going to their sideline. Nobody seems to be in a big hurry. I um, believe they've, they've taken Jacob Moore's helmet away from him. I believe he's probably, and his pads are off. So they must, he was a little wobbly when he got up. And I bet they they checked him out. And he may have a little bit of a concussion or something. But he's, uh, he's not going to be playing the second half. That's Jacob Moore. That's going to be a big loss right there. Fortunately, it is the last game. So he won't have to miss anything. He's been an excellent force all season. Of course, he's the center for us as well, so I don't know who the backup center is. We'll have to wait and see how that works out as well, but good effort, good season by Jacob Moore. Probably, like Chip said earlier, uh, will lead the team in tackles through through the season, but nonetheless, here we go. Start the second half kickoff. Back deep to receive is Sumter, Sumter Bass, and of course, Wilson Brandon, the southpaw kicker doing the kicking. Gets a high kick, short kick. Going to take a bounce and taken by Bass. Never mind, going to be taken another up back at the 20-yard line who breaks a tackle. And Brandon uh, Wilson Brandon was the last line of defense right there and actually made the tackle. So good job by Wilson making the tackle right there. I was Justin Joyner was... Uh, uh, he was about a half a step from being gone. He just about gone. He uh, barely got the ball the time before he got hit and then... Uh, uh, kind of everybody just kind of went by him, and all of a sudden he was off. But uh, we were able to stop him. So, so the Clark Stelly offense will come onto the field. Their first possession of the second half starts right here. They're already up 27 to seven, and Augusta Nelly brings his men to the line. Regular speed under center formation. The handoff to Bird up the middle. He fights forward, still fighting, still getting pushed, and finally brought down. By, that's Carrero, and I see Andrew McDermott in on the tackle, but not after a gain of about eight. So second down and two for Clarksdale Lee. Another big run right there by Alec Bird, who's a, a big back, had a good game tonight, and with the way he looks and runs the ball, he's probably had a pretty good season. Yeah, he just uh, run the ball right out the middle. Kirk just can't can't get a solid lick on him, and uh, you know these uh, these offensive linemen for for Grenada are just I mean for Kirk, for Lee are blocking really well. They're going to give it up the middle once again to Bird. He's just a workhorse taking the toting the football, and he pounds his way up the middle. He's, they're actually doing a better job defensively of hitting him at the point of the line of scrimmage or about a yard, two yards past the line of scrimmage. But uh, he's, big, he's about 220 uh, fullback right there, and he just keeps his legs turning, and he picks up another gain of six for a first down for Clarksdale Lee. Yeah, he's just, uh, just power running right the middle. and. Uh, Lee's a little bit more deliberate here, looks like the second half, and uh, just trying to take some time off the clock. Obviously, they don't want to get in. Nobody wants to get anybody hurt, but if they got an outside shot again in the playoffs, they don't want to get anybody hurt. Another handoff to Bird up the middle, fights his way forward, and this time he's going to be drove Robbie, back. Robbie, Robbie Jackson grabbed him as soon as he got the ball, but uh, couldn't stop him for a couple of two, three yard game. But now here we go with the fake and something else coming after yeah, that now. So just pound, pound. It's going to either be. A seam route to one of the slot backs or one of those counters with, with a slot back faking the dive, or you might see Augustinelli keep it. You never know. That's just the style of this triple option offense in the midline. This time it's going to be a fake, and they're going to go pass it and go down the seam, and the pass is incomplete in and out of the hands right there of Justin Joyner. Pretty good coverage on the play right there. It was that hot? I couldn't tell if that was, yeah, it was Jordan, Andrew Easter or Jordan Hobbs. Easter uh, both were kind of there, and uh, you know, they had some pressure on him, and he had some pressure in the in the backfield throwing the ball, and, and uh, uh, so uh, good good chance for Kirk here to stop, uh, stop it on third down here, third and about eight. So Seven. we'll see what if the Raiders' defense can hold to maybe a punt here in the first position of the second half. Clarksdale Lee comes to the line of scrimmage, motion left to right, going to fake, and here comes the counter, and this time it was sniffed out, but does break the tackle, does join her, but he just gonna, not going to, he's going to be just a little bit shy of the first down. It's going to be fourth and about one, I believe. Uh, it was a good run, breaking that tackle, but once again, and Sue, that was, but did a good job of well, shooting Sam, the gap, and uh, we've done that, just overran the play pretty much. Samuel Stewart hit him in the backfield and uh, was able to break the tackle. It's fourth down about a yard, and of course they're going to, Probably going to give it to the big boy out the middle, and they do, and, and he's going to get it. So. And Bird does get it, and Stewart's trying to wrap him up. You know, giving up about close to probably 100, well, I mean 60 pounds, but it does finally get him. Big man Bird on the ground, and uh, another load of Bird and a first down for Clarksdale Lee. Ball at about the 41-yard line. A couple substitutions in offensively for the Colts. Raiders are obviously going to play some more players as well, all – Freshmen get to play all all four quarters here tonight. Going to go motion left to right. Going to fake the motion, excuse me, and he's going to come back. And they finally get to play. Handoff once again. 
to Bird. He gets it up the middle right there, just right off tackle right there on the straight dive, and he gets it all the way out to about the 34-yard line, so a pickup of about seven or eight yards right there for Alec Bird. I tell you what, he might he might see his name in the newspaper uh, Sunday, but he's going to be well, feeling it. He's going to be worn out by tomorrow morning. Unless his heart, Sanders Stewart doesn't weigh about 150 pounds, and they're, they're going right at him on that left side. It just uh, He's getting right back down in that four-point stance, though, so he's He's taking on the challenge. Another handoff to Bird this time. They go right, uh, just to the right off, right guard, and he's tackled right there by Mitch Carrero. And it's going to be right around the first down marker again. And they're not even going to bring the chains out. They're going to signal first down. So another first down. I believe that's the fifth or sixth rush for Bird. And he's bending over a little bit winded right here as he's toe to the rock. A lot tonight. Ball at the 30 yard line. 9.08 remaining in the third period. Motion left to right. Tall sweep. Going to get a block on the outside and breaks the tackle. He's at the 2015 10 5 touchdown. Clarksdale Lee on the tall sweep. That's Sumter Bass right there from 30 yards out. And that'll put the score at 33 7 with 8.56 remaining here in the third period, awaiting the PAT. Just got a good block from his other uh, slot back over there on the side and was able to turn it up. Up the field and uh, scampered his in, way to the end zone from 30 yards out, untouched. So 30-37, waiting the PAT. Yeah, they're going for two. No, it looks, looks like, like they are going to go to go for two, try to make it a 28-point ball game. So let's see if the Raiders can try to stop this two-point conversion. In the play from the sideline is Augusta Nelly. They're going to give it to Bird off tackle, and he's going to just easily. Trot his way through for the two-point conversion, so it is successful, and that puts the score now at 35-7. to Clarksdale Lee with 8.56 remaining here in the third period, and Kirk Academy will have the uh, ball when we come back. Kick off in 30 seconds back here on Star 92. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. Hey, hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Yeah, that's awkward. Mm. Very awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. In Grenada County, call 662-226-4931. Getting ready for the kickoff. Back deep to receive. Paxton Haynes and Zach Beckham. Kicking his Crumpton, and he kicks this one's a low line drive. Going to be taken by Beckham at the 20 yard line, and he's going to bring it up the middle of the field, and he's going to be brought down right about the 33 yard line. So that's where the Raiders will put up shop right here, the first possession of the second half. Hopefully, can get a good drive here, maybe put some points on the board. And as Hudspeth trots his way out to the offensive huddle, trailing 35 to 7. Yeah, I know Gunner didn't have a, uh, his best first half throwing the ball, and uh, I know he wants to come out and finish up his career here with uh, you know, a better second half throwing the ball, so hopefully Kirk will give him some time to throw and he can, uh, can make some throws and, and uh, you know, finish up a strong uh, career here. He's going to be up there, I'm sure. I don't really know the Kirk Academy history, but I'm sure he's up there uh, in the top something with touchdown passes through his career for Kirk Academy before it's all said and done. Hopefully he can get... A couple more here tonight. Shotgun, he's going to right back and throw this one. It's caught by Holman Taylor on a little quick hitch route after a gain of five. So Holman Taylor, I guess you could call him old reliable, especially from <laughs> the midway point on to now. He's uh, pretty much caught every way, thrown his way, hasn't he, Jill? He has caught a lot of balls he's thrown his way. Been really, really impressed with, uh, with him this year. And so, uh, again, just a sophomore. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, look forward to seeing him the next couple of years. Got a bunch of talent coming back. want people to understand that. This team is very young. We've said that throughout the year. A bunch of talent going to come back, and you can only get better with experience and, uh, and game playing. So we'll see. Another three-step drop by Gunner, and he's going to throw it to Zach Beckham in the, uh, in the uh, slot right there. He was running the seam, and Zach just turned his head right at the last minute. Didn't, I don't really think he thought he was going to get the ball, but I don't know why. He was wide open. He threw a perfect strike that time, right, hit him right between the numbers, and uh, yeah, I believe that uh, Zach, like Zach wasn't expecting the ball, and uh, uh, like I say, he uh, should have caught that one. He hit him right where he good, good throw by Gunner. A very good throw by Gunner right there. In stride, nonetheless, it's going to ring up. Third down and about six right here for the Raiders. Ball just outside the 35-yard line. Hudson's in the gun. 
He's going to try to maybe get them to jump off sides. They won't. They're going to go. They're going to go to a quick hitch right there to Cole Crenshaw. Makes a reception. Tries to make a spin, and finally bringing him down at midfield right there is Matt Spitzer. But nonetheless, a first down. So a little bit of momentum right there for the Raiders. A uh, good job by Cole Crenshaw. And uh, you would think people would quit playing off so deep on him. Uh, that's just what I mean. He's a lot of his catches have been just eight, ten yards, turn around, and then he makes a few people miss. Yep, that was just exactly the same as the, the touchdown and uh, just had a little bit further to go. He's limping now he's a little eight, bit. Yeah, it looks like he's favoring that ankle, but I doubt you see him come out unless it's just absolutely painful in this last half right here. As a Raider, double twins and a bunch of movement. So we're going to see who they call it on. I think it's going to be on Kirk. It will be. I think it was. Uh, that is, is either going to be Jordan Hobbs or Paxton Haynes. They both jumped in a defensive end for Clarksdale jump, and I believe Paxton jumped a little bit earlier. So it's going to back him up five yards. So first down to 15 for Kirk Ball at the 46 as they got a first down on this drive so far. Going to try to continue it to continue it to go. Double twins and Zach in the backfield. And Gunner's going to roll left. He's got a lot of room to run if he wants, but he looks like he's going to throw and he's going to let it go. And the pass is broken up, intended for Holman Taylor on the left sideline and a good play defensively right there by Sumter Bass is just knocking the ball out of reach of Holman Taylor. So to bring up second down at 15. Well, Gunner probably should have run the ball there. He, he had he could have gained about six, eight, maybe maybe ten yards, and uh, uh, Holman was well well covered by by number five Bass, and Bass. Uh, really uh, uh, just uh, trying to get a a big play there. But uh, just second down here, but still uh, still got a chance here to move the chains. Second down at 15. Uh, ball at the 46. Going to run that double twin in tight uh, formation on each side. So, got Zach in the backfield. Gunner's going to take a three-step drop, turn around and hit Cole on the out route. Cole's going to try to make a miss, spin, and going to be knocked down right about the 46-yard line, tackled by Spencer. So, Cole Crenshaw with another reception here on this drive, and it's going to bring it about third and manageable now. So, I'm going to say third and about five along, six to go right here for Kirk Academy. Yeah, just a quick out, down and out, and uh, Cole made a good Good uh, catch and good move to, to break a tackle there. So got uh, third down here. Big big play to keep his drive moving. Third down is going to be seven. So it's a long six right there. Uh, going to go to regular spread formation. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Packs in the backfield with Gunner. Gunner's going to take a three-step drop. He's rolling. Pump fakes. Floats outside the pocket. Passes just out of the reach of Cole Crenshaw as he was near the first down marker but just ran out a little bit of a room. But it's probably going to be four down territory on the other side of the field right here at the 46-yard line. So fourth down and trailing 35-7 to seven are the Raiders with 624 remaining here in the third period. And they will go for it, but, you know, why not? So let's see what happens right here. Bunch of switching going on on the defensive side of the football by Clarksdale Lee. Going to bring his men to the line and just another regular spread formation. And he gets Clarksdale Lee to jump off sides. It won't be a first down, but it will bring it a lot closer. closer. So a good hard count right there by Gunner to draw the defensive end off by Clarksdale Lee. So instead of fourth and seven, you got fourth and about a long, a long two. So Kirk uh, Gunner trying to get the play call, and he gets it. Let's see what the Raiders try to do here on fourth and two. It's like we said, it's a lot more manageable than fourth and seven. Uh, deep as the cornerbacks playing off of, are they going to put uh, Cole in the in the? Uh, they're going to go under center. Go under center. Surely they're not going to try just. Oh. Somebody jumped again. It might be Clarksdale Lee. I'm not yeah, sure. Clarksdale Lee jumped, but then he jumps. So I don't know who. I believe it's Lee that jumped I think first. it is Lee. Lee and um, I think it was Clark to Lee. And let's say I believe that's who I saw first. I mean, and then, and then I saw the right guard for Kirk jump. Uh, they're going to call false start on uh, Kirk, and that was kind of an iffy call. I don't, I don't agree with it. I think the defensive uh, end jumped from Clark to Lee first, but uh, nonetheless, that's going to back it back up. So back to where we started at fourth and seven, but. Uh, it looked like they were just going to, I don't know, it looked like another hard count under center. They had a offset eye backfield with Cole in at tight end. Maybe he was going to just try to 
keep the drive going with a first down, but now it looks like going to have to maybe put it in the air at fourth and seven. So Gunner comes out in the gun. 5-2 look defensively for Clarksdale Lee. Gunner takes a snap. He's going to take a three-step drop, step it up in the pocket, and let it go, and the pass oh, is going to be picked off by... And he's at the 40, and he's going to be gone. as a 20, 15, 10, 5 touchdown pass picked off by Sumter Bass. Sumter Bass, and he just read it beautifully. Gunner just tried to get rid of it and make something happen as he was uh, being pressured in the pocket. So a pick six right there for Clark Lee, and that'll put the score 41-7, to awaiting the PAT now. So uh, just a, another just a bad, uh, bad play right there by Kirk Academy, Gunner. Once again, did a good job of avoiding pressure, stepping up in the pocket. Looks like he got held onto by his ankle right when he let the ball go. And Bass just jumped the route and uh, was untouched. 65 yards uh, for an interception return to the house. So 41-7. to And it looks like they're going to go for two again. Will Clark still lead? Augustine Ellie comes to the line. He's got Bird in the backfield. And uh, if it's my guess, they're going to go to Bird. No, they're going to throw the football. They're going to just give it up a fade route to the end zone, and the pass is picked off right there in the end zone. by Dal I believe that was Dalton Bell who picked it off. So they just tried to throw a fade route in the end zone, jump ball, and it was not there. So the two-point conversion fails, but nonetheless on an interception return 65 yards by Sumner Bass has put the score at 41-7 with 6-10 remaining here in the third period. We will take a minute timeout. Come back with more Raider football right after this. The Chrysler Great American Driveway event is going on now at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in their brand new location at the corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. Sunset has an even bigger selection to choose from. Come see the new 2015 Chrysler 200. A new location with plenty of room for you to check out everything. Ram trucks, Jeep Wrangler, and Patriot Dodge Durango and Charger. Come by today or see our selection at driveakirk.com. The Chrysler Great American Driveway event at Sunset Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in their new location corner of 8 and 51 in Grenada. So back out of the timeout, the kickoff was uh, taken by Zach Beckham, and uh, he got a good return. For fortunately, he had the ball stripped, uh, had the ball stripped, and fortunately for the Raiders, it went out of bounds. So the Raiders will take over all after the interception return for a touchdown at the 32-yard line, We're trailing 41 to seven with 6:03 remaining here in the third period. Another here comes the pistol formation for Kirk. They're going to turn around and pitch it to Zach. Zach's going to try to get around the end. He gets past one defender. He's at the 30. Good blocking on the outside by Cole, and he's going to be brought down. At about the 33-yard line, uh, probably wouldn't happen if they've been excellent receiving blocking right there by Cole Crenshaw. So to bring up second down and about three to go. So a good play right there by Zach Beckham. Yeah, great speed going around the end. Just a quick pitch to him around the right side, and he was able to get the corner. And uh, uh, nice, nice first down play here, about eight yards. So see what the Raiders try to do. Come back and let me put some points on the board after that. Unfortunate event, last possession. Going to go stay with the pistol formation, at least on this play. Going to await the snout. It's going to be a fake handoff. For another reminder, they're going to give it to Paxton and his red beautifully by the defensive line. Uh, tried to give a counter to Paxton Haynes on their left side and fake the option to the right. Paxton couldn't go anywhere, maybe lost a yard on the play, so to bring up third down and five with five minutes remaining here in the third period. And uh, Gunner going to get this call from Coach McCoy on the sidelines. Another defensive substitution for Clarksdale Lee on the defensive line. They just weren't able to get any any push off the line there that time, and uh, that way that play has worked this year at times, but uh, did, didn't work that time. The third down and five, pistol formation again, and a fake to handoff, and Gunner eludes the pocket once again, rolls to his right, he's got to get rid of it. And gets rid of it, and it's picked off once again. I think they're going to say he's in. They are. They're going to say uh, interception right there. Number 12, Tyler Stanley. As Gunner just tried to get rid of it, and over 
through one receiver, and Tyler Stanley picked it off and got both feet inbound. So back-to-back -back, uh, turnovers right there by the Raiders with 427 remaining in the third quarter. And the ball is going to be spotted right at the 46-yard line. So that's where Clarksdale Lee will take over. And, and just unfortunate right there, not – very good offensive show so far here in the second half by the Raiders. Well, just trying to force it there. He's got number 54. Uh, uh, Tyler Clark has just been uh, all coming off the end every play and uh, just have not been able to block him. And uh, he's putting pressure on uh, Gunner and just trying to make something happen. And, uh, you know, just unfortunate guy made, made a good, good catch there to, to intercept the ball. So 41-7, Clarksville Lee is going to take a timeout. Uh, we'll take one as well. We'll take a minute timeout and back with more Raider football after this. Hi, this is Nathan Burnett, State Farm Insurance. I'd just like to say on behalf of everyone here at my office, good luck to the Raiders in this upcoming season. Out of the timeout, uh, Clark Selly runs a tall sweep to the from the left to the right. Uh, another running back coming in the game, that's Will Fife. He picks up about six yards, so second down and four, and Clark Selly is going to drop back. Gustinelli is going to quick pass, and a great tackle right there in open field. Warner Ham just to stand up, hit him around, and he made the completion. Pass was completed to Parker Delaney, but a great tackle in open field by Warner Herring from his cornerback position, but it was enough to get the first down. Yeah, he was right there on the, on the throw, and uh, – no, no gain after the catch at all. So good, good play there by Warner. Clark Stelly obviously is in no hurry to run a play. Going to let the clock run out as much as they can. First down ball at the 34-yard line. Whole new backfield for Clark Stelly, and this time Shaw Johnson's in at quarterback. He's going to keep it after a fake dive, and he gets all the way out to about the 26-yard line. And he's going to be get about six yards. Uh, so about seven, it'll say seven. So second down and three to go. And Joe Stewart right there on the tackle for Kirk Academy. And then, like I said, a whole new backfield. Uh, Shaw Johnson's in the game at quarterback. He's a junior. Uh, the fullback is uh, new. Uh, he's been in a couple times, but he's not played that much for Bird. He's in for Bird, and there's two slot backs around. They're going to run a toss sweep to the left this time, and it's going to be sniffed out beautifully right there. Uh, great job of making him cut Nolan it back Walker. in. It's Nolan Walker on the tackle after a gain of about two yards. But nonetheless, again, it's enough to pick up the first down in uh, two minutes and 30 seconds remaining here in the third period. And Clark Sill Lee will continue to drive even with the new look offensively with a new quarterback and obviously new uh, running backs. Uh, I can't really tell if anybody's new on the offensive line or not. But nonetheless, they still run a no huddle. And Shaw Johnson's going to go motion right to left. He's going to fake the dive and keep it. And he's going to be tackled right there in the backfield with nowhere to go. So probably a loss of two right there on the play when he tried to keep it. Yeah, Nolan Walker, Walker once again on the tackle. Nolan Walker again back there to uh, fool me. I thought the fullback had the ball. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden I saw uh, the quarterback coming. And Nolan uh, quickly closed the gap and uh, made a really nice tackle again in ninth grader. So, uh, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of young guys on this team right now playing. Shaw Johnson comes to the line. He's going to go motion right to left again. They're going to fake the toss sweep. Got a bootleg to the right. He could run it if he wants to, but he's going to stop and set up and make a pass. And the pass is caught right there from the drag route to the uh, slot back nine. number nine, Will Fife. A uh, good catch right there by Will Fife on the bootleg. Pass a little bit behind him, but after a catch made uh, right there, it's going to bring up another first down. So. Same 
Same offensive plays, uh, just a whole new uh, look and as far as uh, different players out there are concerned for Clarksdale. Um, really not anything fancy. They run a four or five uh, different plays and then try to hit you with a bootleg or maybe a seam route down the middle. And they're going to give it up the middle to the fullback. He fights his way out to about past the 10 right at the 9-yard line. Good tackle there by number 70 for Kirk Garrett Starnes. Uh, nice, nice stop there. Really no, no about a yard gain there. So Garrett Starnes seeing some action in tonight on the defensive line for Kirk Academy. So second down and about, they're going to say maybe nine. Johnson again to the line of scrimmage. Another handoff, uh, excuse me, he keeps it this time, Shaw does, and he fights his way up to about the five-yard line before he's tackled by Paxton Haynes. So it'll bring up after about a game of four, third and, third and five. So you got to get five, they're at the five. So you get five yards to get a touchdown. I think they can get a first down. I don't really know what the chain gang's doing. I don't really know. You can't really get a first down if you <laughs> the, the, get a touchdown. Looks like it's right at the goal line. So that's going to be the last play of the quarter. So that's the end of the third period. Uh, Clarksdale Lee leads Kirk Academy by a score of 41-7 to seven and trailing third and five to go. Ball at the five-yard line. We will take a minute timeout to come back with the final period here uh, for Kirk Academy this season in football. Uh, back in a minute here on Star 92. Hey, I'm Lane Lever with Leverett Auto Glass. If y'all need any windshield repair needs or automotive glass repair needs, just let us know here at Leverett Auto Glass. Been in business since 1988. And we'd like to thank all of our loyal customers for coming to us for many years. And anybody that needs any windshield repair replacement done, we'll be glad to help you out. Just give us a call at 662-227-1153. Go Raiders! We just love doing it. Are you cooking tonight? No way, Jose. That's No Way Jose, 1201 Sunset Drive in Grenada. Come out and join us for mouth-watering Tex-Mex food, and happy hour starts at 7. Fun for the whole family, or come out and relax and meet new friends. Or just say hello to Charlie. Hey, Kirk. Come, come join us after each full game. We'll be here, right, Charlie? Three locations, Grenada, Houston, or West Point. No Way Jose. Tex-Mex done right. Back here on the fourth, uh, start of the fourth quarter, 41-7 is the score. Clark still lead with the ball, third and five on Kirk Academy's five-yard line. A new, obviously, a same offensive people in, a new look, different people in motion. Right to left, going to fake run the counter trap, and he's going to get upended into the end zone for a touchdown from five yards out. That's Will Fife on the counter trap. So uh, another rushing touchdown for the Colts here tonight, and that will put the score at 47 to 7 uh, as we just started the fourth period here at Raider Field and they're going to go for two again so Johnson brings his men to the line going to go motion right to left tall sweep to the left let's see if they can come up and make the play and Warner tries to come up and he makes the tackle but not after the tailback dives into the end zone for the two point conversion and that's Patrick Sarton in to six to six successively it's Complete the two-point conversion. <laughs> Forty-nine to seven here. Uh, Kirk's uh, uh, got to just get back and, and work hard in the weight room. And uh, you know, they, like I said, they have some talented kids coming up. And uh, but uh, just you know, we 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 just uh, gotta gotta work harder in the weight room and and uh, get stronger and uh, uh, you know get. Uh, just uh, work, work harder is what it's going to take. Yep, that's you're exactly right, Chip. And 49-7 uh, to 7 is the score here. Uh, clock is now running. I really don't know why it wasn't running earlier. It's uh, towards the end of the third period. But nonetheless, Clark Shalee gets set to kick off. Going to be a new kicker right here. It's going to be Maddox Allen doing the kicking for Clark Shalee. And Andrew Reister and Zach Beckham. And I believe Dalton Bell back there deep to receive for Kirk Academy. So the Raiders are going to come back and see what they'll do offensively when they get the ball. Allen's set and kicks it off, and he just toes it right to Andrew McDermott at the 30-yard line, and McDermott's going to take it. He's out past the 35, cuts back all the way to the other side of the field, actually probably going to lose a couple yards, and he's brought down at the 30, 32-yard line right there. 
That's an excellent tackle on special teams. Adam Nolan. And that's where Kirk will take over. So 49 to 7. Like I said, the clock is running 9.57 remaining here in the ball game. <clears throat> See, we're going to give Gunner and these guys one more chance to score, you know, to uh, put, put, uh, put some points on the board for their last, uh, maybe his last drive of his career. So I know he wants to finish strong. So, so they'll come out and there's the regular shotgun spread motion. And they're going to drop back. Swing around out of the backfield to Beckham. Completed at the 35-40. Good hard run by Zach Beckham. He's all the way out to a close to midfield and after a gain of about 17 yards and another first down for Kirk Academy. So good, good pitch and catch right there. Worked all season so far on the swing route. And Zach Beckham, excuse me, that's uh, Paxton Haynes who picks up the first first down. Yeah, nice swing pass out in the, the flats. That's, that's worked, uh, again, as you said, a lot of big plays out of Paxton and, and uh, Zach on that play this year. And coming back to the line of scrimmage, still regular spread formation. Gunner's going to take the snap. He's going to rear up and hit Paxton on the swing pass to the right this time. And he makes a stop, and he's going to cut back all the way. They're going to say his knee was down when he tried to cut back. He did an excellent job of spinning off a defender, but his knee, uh, unfortunately, at the ground. So try to run it to the other side of the field this time, and uh, not so successful. Probably lose a couple yards on the play. Second down and 12 coming up. 8.25 remaining here in the ball game. Good to see a good crowd. Pretty much every home game has been a pretty good crowd here at Kirk Academy. And uh, uh, if you could come to some basketball games, I know there's always a great crowd at Kirk basketball games. Hopefully it continue to be like that. Gunner's going to roll from right to left, and he's going to take off running. He fakes like he's going to slide and breaks a couple of tackles and gets all the way out to the 42-yard line. So good job by Gunner right there. Uh, doing a good job of once again avoiding pressure and uh, probably did uh, what he probably would have if he did, could have done it again should have done it a couple times earlier in the game and took off running and uh, picks up a first down. Yep, good good run there. Uh, I, I believe it's taken just about three years for Gunner to get back to full speed. That was probably the best speed he's shown since his junior ninth grade eighth grade year when he before he hurt his knees. So hopefully for basketball season that'll work good. He'll have a have a good uh, good season in basketball with a with a nice. Uh... And this time they're going to run a draw right there to Beckham. Beckham fights off a couple defenders, but barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he's tackled right there at the forty yard line. So second down and ten. But like you said, hopefully they can come back. He's going to be a pivotal player. He and Cole. Cole. Cole's a pretty much. Uh, he's the Cole's the quarterback of the basketball team. He's the point guard. Pretty much runs the show. Uh, he and Jaggers Denley will see this year and of course the big man child's underneath um, and Gunner's going to be the small forward role player he's going to be pretty much as you call it in basketball the athlete Gunner steps up in the pocket does an athletic move right there and no, finds McDermott down the flats and he's tackled out of bounds but not after a pass complete for about five yards at the 35 yard line. A Andrew's another one that, that's uh, right McDermott to the basketball team and Josh Stanford uh, hopefully he'll be out and so they, they, they got a lot of a lot of talent on the basketball. A little bit different than football. We, we, we will have a lot of a lot of talent out there to really compete uh, uh, again this year. Really will. And uh, like we said earlier in the halftime, they have uh, both both guys and girls coming off district wins. So there will be uh, girls obviously the odds on favorite, and you can't count the guys out with a couple about three or four returning starters. So Gunner's going to Statue of Liberty to Zach Beckham, and he runs it up the middle, and he's hit hard. But he's uh, right around that first down marker, and they'll see if they give him a first down. He's right at the 30-yard line. That's a fake pass, and just stand up and just delay. I guess you could say half-back delay, kind of a Statue of Liberty play, and it's worked pretty well this season, too. Yep, we've had some good, good runs off that play. And it is a first down, so the drive continues for Gunnar Hudspeth and uh, the Kirk Raiders and the other three seniors, and hopefully we can get a score here. Ball at the 30-yard line. Gunner's going to take the snap, three-step drop. He's avoiding pressure again. He's going to get rid of it. He throws that one away that time. That Threw that one away. Good decision right there by Gunner to get rid of it. He's just really, I mean, he's obviously thrown two interceptions, but both of them were 
uh, because of uh, what, what, not because, but both of them were definitely had pressure to do with it, right, and avoiding pressure. Well, you know, you're down 49-7. You got to take team, chances. You know, other team knows what you're going to do, so they're pinning their ears back and, uh, you know, you're putting pressure on, on Gunner, and so uh, you've got to hurry up and we won't get this playoff here. Yeah, I don't. They're going to have to call a timeout. I, well, they're going to hurry up and get to the line. They got eight seconds, just under five minutes to go here in the ball game. Second down and ten. They get the playoff. Gunner's going to drop back, turn around, and throw it just. Uh, Coleman Tyler was coming out of his break and just yeah. turned around and hit him right, just a little bit behind him. Uh, just. Just about a split second off right there, Chuck. Well, just uh, like I say, he had to. Uh, I think Gunner was getting some pressure, and he threw it a little bit quicker than he wanted to, and he he threw it a good bit behind Holman, and uh, ended up being incomplete. Third down, ten here, by a big big. Uh, this will this will be it if we don't uh, we don't capitalize right here. So big big. I'm sure we got two downs to go here, but uh, third and ten at the thirty. And you're gonna go regular spread once again. Paxton Hames is in the backfield with Gunner. Gunner handles the snap. He's going to drop back, step up in the pocket, and he's going to be brought down uh, from his blind side. Didn't see that. That's uh, Maddox Allen going to get the sack on the play. Uh, he tried to step up in the pocket, did a good job, and got tackled from behind right there. So fourth down and about 14 to go. Last play right here probably for the Raiders on the offensive side of the football here tonight. So obviously going to go for it, trailing 49-7. to Good play right there by uh, Big Maddox Allen uh, got to call a couple of his games last year as a baseball player. He's a pretty, pretty good pitcher for Clarksdale Lee. Of course, we will be covering uh, Kirk Baseball, too. So please stay tuned throughout this, out the season. 4-14, to 14, and here it is. Gunner takes a snap, three-step drop, and he's going to take off and get try to get rid of it and just spinning off of people, staying on his feet, won't want to go down, and he's finally brought down at about the 30-yard line. And I tell you what, that was a... Pretty, pretty darn good effort right there. He, he he knew what was about to happen. He didn't want to go down, and uh, he broke about four or five tackles right there. But nonetheless, it's turnover on downs, and right at two minutes here in the ball game, and uh, that's about that'll probably about do it. Maybe a couple couple runs right here and a knee, and that'll probably wrap this one up. So 49 to seven is the score. 2:30 remaining. They're going to run a toss sweep to the left, and it's taken by Sarton. Sarton's out. Going to cut it all the way back to this side of the field. Stays on his feet, and he's going to be brought down right about the 40-yard line. So a good run right there by Patrick Sarton, the junior. Brings up another first down. Right at two minutes remaining here in the ball game. So Clarksville Lee will move. I don't really know. I saw earlier this. they say they had a four and four record. No, but they it's were four and five. Four and five. They're okay, five I five. went updated. So it'll be five and five, and we'll see what happens. And they'll be five and five. Shaw Johnson's gonna keep it on the option, and he gets all the way out to close to midfield before he's tackled. So a gain of eight right there by the backup quarterback Shaw Johnson. So we'll have to see throughout the conference who uh, they'll end the season at 500. Will Clark still lead? And with well, an outside shot looking in, maybe at a postseason appearance. And uh, the Raiders will end the season at 3-7, and seven, but a lot better 3-7 and seven Raider team than what you would probably expect. Played a lot tough, and uh, like we said, all the season, ninth, 10th graders, only four seniors uh, on this football team. Uh, got a bunch of kids coming up, and uh, it'll be fun to watch, I'm sure, in the next year, two, three years. Shaw Johnson's going to keep it. He gets all the way to the 40, and he gets out. Stiff arm, he's at the 30, stays on his feet, brought down at about the 27-yard line by Jordan Hobbs. So good run right there by Shaw Johnson, who looks like he will be the leader for the Colts next year under center. He's a junior. Augustin Elliott, the starting quarterback, is a senior. So another first down, but, yeah, nonetheless, we still got a bunch of ninth and 10th graders. Pretty much the whole football team is made up of uh, underclassmen for Kirk Academy. So in the next two or three years, stay tuned, or maybe even next year. You never know. With the conference changing, the Raiders will be ready. They and need, we will see what happens. They need to take a knee. 40 seconds remaining. Okay. They're going to run a tall sweep to the right. And it's going to be Sarton, and he's going to be tackled right there by Jordan Hobbs and Preston Woods. And that's going to probably be the last play of the game is tackled right there at the 25-yard line. 24 seconds remaining, and that's they don't have to run another play if they don't want to. That's about 20 seconds left, and 
That's going to be your ball game, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a great season. The final score here tonight, 49-7. to Clarksdale Lee is victorious over Kirk Academy here tonight. Uh, and, uh, we will be back, of course, in a couple weeks uh, to get basketball underway, like Chip pointed out. Got the girls and guys coming up in a couple weeks, and good looking forward to that, and we will be ready. To take on whatever brings at us, will the Raiders own the court here in two weeks?